Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to church for this Sunday, September the 26th. Still in lockdown, but uh, looks like things will be easing maybe in a couple of weeks' time as the vaccination rates reach uh, higher levels. And um, I doubt we'll be able to meet together as church for a while, but it's lovely to be able to meet in small groups uh, of up to five out there on the terrace for coffee. Lovely to see some of you out there but still very much in lockdown. And so here we are online and uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to um, be thinking today about uh, walking with God in lockdown or walking with God in hard times, a series we're doing at the moment and the, the third in the series, Not Alone in the Storm. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 107. But before we come to the readings and reflecting on them, We're going to reflect on God's majesty, thanks to Julie. from Psalm 107, verses 23 to 32. Some went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage faded away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm. 
and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. This next reading is from Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. Then Jesus got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And Jesus replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. When this whole coronavirus pandemic first kicked off last year and we were all confronted with a changed world and living in lockdown and isolation, it was like a storm had blown up out of nowhere and we were being thrown around by wild waves we hadn't seen coming. And there was a poem that I saw shared many times on Facebook and Twitter and elsewhere, uh, often attributed to author unknown, although I gather, having done a little bit of research, I gather it should actually be credited to someone called Damien Barr. It goes like this. I heard that we are in the same boat, but it's not like, it's not that. We're in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Your ship can be shipwrecked and mine might not be, or vice versa. For some, quarantine is optimal, a moment of reflection or reconnection. Easy in flip-flops or thongs, as we call them, with a whiskey or tea. For others, this is a desperate crisis. For others, it is facing loneliness. For some, peace, rest, time, vacation. Yet for others, torture. How am I going to pay my bills? It goes on, and I won't read it all, but I think there was a great deal of insight in that, that we're in the same storm but not the same boat and that metaphor of a storm is an apt and a powerful one this pandemic is sweeping through our lives shaking everything loose and turning things on their head and we are all caught in this storm and it is the same storm for all of us but we are all in different boats now for some of us the metaphor of being on a boat in a storm is just that a metaphor we're actually sitting in our lounge rooms at home. But some are really stuck, if not on ships, then in hotel quarantine, or in isolation in a nursing home, or a hospital, or in a foreign country or state with no way of getting home. Maybe some of us are quite happy and comfortable, while others are tired and stressed and struggling to cope. I'll be honest and say that having schools closed and having to homeschool Riley as well as trying to work from home ourselves and not being able to go out and see friends and family has pushed all of us in our household to our limits. Uh, this week, Janine's father had a stroke. Uh, he's reasonably okay. He's going to be in rehab for a few weeks, but uh, he can talk and he seems in good spirits. But we can't go and see him or help take care of my mother-in-law because they live in Queensland. And so we're forced to watch on helplessly from a distance. That's my boat. What's yours? Yes, we're all caught in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. But here's the important thing. Whatever boat we're in, whatever storm we're in, Jesus is with us. As he was with the disciples in that little boat, out on the Sea of Galilee when it was caught in a sudden storm, which often happens apparently on the Sea of Galilee due to its geography. Even experienced fishermen like the disciples can get caught out. There are a few things I want to note about that story. 
Uh, the first thing is Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. He didn't fly on ahead of them in his private jet or watch them from afar on his heavenly CCTV. He was right there with them in the boat in that storm. And in the same way, I want to say he's here with us too in our boat and our storm. He left his father's side in glory and he came among us in humble form. He shared our life. As the writer to the Hebrew says, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Jesus does not hold himself aloof. He is with the disciples in the boat, and he is with us in our storm. The second thing I want to say, though, is Jesus wasn't just in the boat with the disciples, just another victim of the storm. He was the controller of the storm. He saved them from the storm. He rebuked the wind and the waves and they stopped. Now, interestingly, this is not the only time the disciples got caught in a storm. Uh, if you're reading through Matthew's chapter, gospel, a few chapters later from this incident, in Matthew chapter 14, the disciples were again caught in a storm. And this time... Jesus wasn't with them, but he came to them, walking on the water. And when he climbed into the boat with them again, the wind died down and the storm stopped. Twice in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus saved his disciples from the storm. And this is consistent with the character of God, the way that he has cared for his people throughout history. We saw in our reading from Psalm 107, uh, which describes people being caught in a storm. And it says in verses 27 to 29, they reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. See, that's what God does. He rescues people from storms. Jesus rescued his disciples from more than one storm. And he can and he does save us in our storms. Now, what, can, what else can we personally draw from this story? Well, it should, of course, strengthen and encourage our faith. Interestingly, in both storm stories, in Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 14, Jesus makes a comment about faith. In that incident with the walking on water in chapter 14, you may remember that Jesus called Peter out of the boat to walk on the water to him. And Peter did. But then... As Peter walked across the water towards Jesus, he began to sink. And you remember what Jesus said to him? Matthew 14, verse 31. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And interestingly, he uses exactly the same phrase in the calming of the storm here in Matthew chapter 8. Verse 26, when the disciples woke him up and said, Save us, Lord, he said, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? See, in both instances, Jesus says their fear, their panic, their doubt was a reflection of their lack of faith. And in Peter's case, it caused him to literally lose buoyancy. He began to sink. Now, we don't all sink literally like that. But we can sink metaphorically. We all have crises of faith, moments of doubt and weakness, when we lose buoyancy and feel the waves getting over our heads at times. As I said, I'll be honest, there are days when we're stuck at home and feeling tired and Riley really doesn't want to do homeschooling and it's raining outside and the cats are fighting when it feels like the waves are starting to get over our heads. How about you? But here's the thing. 
despite the disciples' fear and doubt and the smallness, if I can use that word, of their faith. Jesus stopped the storm anyway. He rebuked the wind and the waves and they stopped. You see, their salvation didn't depend on the amount of faith that they had. It depended on Jesus in whom they put that faith. The same with the walking on the water incident in chapter 14. Peter didn't save himself. It was Jesus who had called him out of the boat, and it was Jesus who reached out his hand and caught him as he began to sink. My point is this. We don't have to sustain ourselves. We don't have to save ourselves. Our trust is in Jesus not in ourselves. Jesus can and does pick us up and carry us through. I guess another thing I want to say is we should expect storms in life. We didn't expect coronavirus to hit, but we shouldn't be surprised when storms do hit. Jesus never promised us a trouble-free life in this world. He didn't put a ring of protection around the disciples in their boats to make sure storms would never hit them. And he doesn't do that for us either. At the recent anti-vaccination protests in Sydney, there was one protester who held up a sign that said, The blood of Jesus is my vaccine. As if to say, because I have Jesus, I don't need your vaccine. This virus can't touch me. But, you know, Jesus never promised his followers that they would be immune to viruses or heart attacks or strokes or car crashes or storms. He doesn't promise that we'd be immune to those things. What he does promise is that he will be with us in the storm. Think about the great apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 27, he was caught in a storm. God didn't stop the storm straight away. It lasted two weeks, we're told. And they ended up being shipwrecked, but they survived. And Paul attributed his survival to God's mercy. Here's a man of great faith, a great evangelist, a a marvellous church planter, a pioneer, a missionary. That didn't stop him getting caught in storms both literal and metaphorical. He experienced storms of hardship and persecution and beatings and imprisonment, as well as shipwrecks. God didn't spare him from trouble, but he was there with him in his troubles. My point is this. God doesn't promise us no storms, but he does promise to be with us in the storm and to see us safely through to the other side. Going back to my starting point, we may not all be in the same boat. I'm fully aware that my boat, my context, my situation is quite different possibly to yours. We're all in different boats, but we are all in the same storm. And more importantly, if we will have him, we all have the same great saviour, in Jesus. The same one who parted the sea for Moses and the Israelites, the same one who calmed that storm for the disciples, the same one who helped Peter walk on water, the same one who preserved Paul's life in a shipwreck, that same Saviour is with us in this storm. So keep on trusting him. Trust That even when your strength fails and your faith is weak and small, your future depends not on yourself, but on him. Amen. One of the things I reflected on in that reading on that passage was the fact that our security, our hope depends not on the strength of our faith, but in the Jesus in whom we put our faith. 
And uh, there's a marvellous new song or new hymn that's around at the moment that uh, a couple of people have mentioned they love and would love to hear played. And City Alight have very graciously allowed us to use uh, their recording of this song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
Let's join together in prayer. Our loving God, we stand before you in awe. As we gaze at the heavens and see the beauty of the world around us, we are reminded that this is your world. You are our creator and our heavenly father, and that you have shown your love for us so deeply by sending Jesus to earth to be amongst your people and to finally die in our place so that we might live with you in eternity. Lord, there are so many things to give thanks for and so many situations to pray for. We pray for all the peoples of the world and especially where lives have been affected by this dreadful virus pandemic and where so many people have suffered loss, grief, pain and isolation. We pray for parts of Australia where there have been increases in numbers of people affected by the virus and where there may be social disruption and personal loss or pain and pray that rules might be obeyed and vaccinations increase to help stop the spread. We pray for our Indigenous communities in Western New South Wales as they and medical professionals manage the impact of COVID. Thank you for the leadership and guidance of our Premier and medical teams and the workers on the front line who have served so tirelessly to keep us safe. We thank you that New South Wales, having been in lockdown for so long, is now seeing such large numbers of people of all ages coming forward to be vaccinated. And we are now seeing hopeful signs that many of the restrictions that have brought financial and emotional distress to many people may soon be eased. We pray for all our leaders and elected members of our federal, state and shire governing bodies, also our armed forces and police who keep us safe. We ask that all who lead should be wise should consider the needs of their people and your hand will be on them through their leadership and actions. We specially pray for our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who has travelled to the United States to meet with some world leaders that they might always make decisions and policies in accordance with your will and for the peace and well-being of all peoples of all nations. We pray for Jenny and Scott's girls during his many absences from their family in these stressful times. May they always know your presence with them. Father God, we pray for your church throughout the world, for our faithful evangelists and ministers who are working both here and overseas to spread the love of Jesus. We pray for Christians everywhere, including our own country, that they might hold fast to the truths of your word and be salt and light wherever you have placed them in this needy world. We pray that wherever there is anti-God feeling or indifference to our society in Australia today, the faithful witness of your people may continue to lead many people to acknowledge the presence and their need of a loving and saving God. We think of the people in Afghanistan and the upheaval there as the Taliban take over, restricting the choices people will be able to make, especially the women. Thank you that so many of their citizens have been able to leave and travel to other countries and that's happened through the care and concern of other nations, including Australia. And we pray that as they settle, many might come to find and know Jesus. 
We pray for all who are suffering, the sick, the poor, the depressed, the lonely, the unloved, the persecuted, and those who may be unemployed in this climate and those who care for them. We pray for those in our village who are not well, especially those who are currently hospitalised and those who might be feeling sad, isolated or finding it hard to cope. And we pray that your healing and loving arms might engulf them and that they might find peace and rest in Jesus. Help us also, Lord, to find opportunities to reach out and be your loving, caring people to them. Lord God, we thank you for this village where you have placed us and for the friends we have come to know and, and, and love. We thank you for all those who work here, for Manager Jen, who has been vigilant in keeping us safe, for Carolyn, who keeps our office tuned, for Sarah, who keeps us well and also entertained, for Sue, Daniela, Chrissa and Lee, who have kept us nourished well, and for John Zori, our new maintenance man, whom we pray will settle in well and enjoy working here amongst us at DRV. We pray for our chaplains, John and Faye, and we give thanks for these precious godly saints, for their enthusiasm for your word, their encouragement, faithful gospel ministry, love and care for us all. We pray for John's safety as he travels along the busy highway on his working days. May your word work in our hearts through John's message today. During this time of lockdown, we have been blessed in this village to have been kept safe. And at the same time, we have beautiful space and gardens where we have been able to walk around and see the beauty of your creation while we enjoy the sun, fresh air, gardens and hear the birds. Thank you for the blessing now of being able to share fellowship on the balcony with small groups so that we can now catch, chat and catch up with friends. As we enter another week, we pray you will keep us safe, guide our paths, help us to reach out with love and care to those around us and fill us with your love and grace. I would like to conclude our prayer time now by reading a prayer that Faye shared, shared with us in our Thursday prayer group. Lord, you know the deep places through which our lives must go. Help us when we enter them to lift our hearts to you. Help us to be patient when we are afflicted, to be humble when we are in distress and grant that the hope of your mercy may never fail us and the consciousness of your loving kindness may never be clouded or hidden from our eyes. And we ask all these things through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.